Good afternoon, boys and girls. Miss Quast here with a realistic fiction story for you, all about caterpillars. In my class, we're learning all about the life cycles of a caterpillar, and so we're starting at the beginning and looking at 10 Little Caterpillars by Bill Martin Jr., illustrated by Lois Ellert. The pictures in this book are beautiful in true Lois Ellert style. 10 Little Caterpillars. So all of her pictures are made in collaged paper that she's cut out and you can see there have been some very hungry caterpillars munching on these leaves. The first little caterpillar crawled into a bower. You can see in here. One thing I like about Lois Ellert's books, if you look closely, you can see the different things that she's using. So this is a wild rose. And at the back of her book, she's going to explain what caterpillar that is. And it, Fun fact about caterpillars is their parents, their mothers, lay the eggs on the plant in which their baby caterpillar will eat. So a monarch will lay her eggs on a milkweed plant because that's the plant that her child likes to eat. The second little caterpillar wiggled up a flower. We've got delphinium blanket flower, foxglove, snapdragons. So these are things that you might be finding in your garden as our flowers start to peak up. The third little caterpillar climbed a cabbage head. Oh, and I know if you're a gardener, you might not like to see that caterpillar there because he's going to be eating the leaves. The fourth little caterpillar found a melon bed. It's a nice watermelon, a muskmelon, honeydew. And there's some real garden helpers here, the ladybugs. They're really great because they eat aphids, which are small little flies that like to eat plants as well. The fifth little caterpillar sailed a garden pool. This one's munching on a maple leaf. Look at those bright, vivid colors. The sixth little caterpillar was carried off to school. So someone's found this in their garden and they're bringing it to show their teacher and their class. And this is the milkweed plant, so we know that that is a monarch chrysalis there. And if you look really closely, there's some monarch eggs there. And the mother usually lays them on the underside of leaves so that they're protected from predators and the elements such as strong winds or rain. The seventh little caterpillar met a hungry wren. And this is a thistle. And we have these here in Canada. This is a painted lady caterpillar. And if you've ever had caterpillars in your classroom, chances are it was this kind of a caterpillar that turned into a beautiful painted lady butterfly. The eighth little caterpillar was frightened by a hen. And that's definitely a predator. That would make a nice snack for that hen. The ninth little caterpillar fell into the sea. This caterpillar is going to be lunch for this sea bass. The tenth little caterpillar scaled an apple tree. See the big branches with their beautiful fruit. And you can see that this leaf is kind of bent over like that. There are some caterpillars that instead of making a chrysalis that would hang from a branch or a leaf, they make their chrysalis inside um, of a leaf and they wrap the leaf around them and then they let their silky threads go around to protect their body. And sometimes you can see trees with tent caterpillars in them and the whole tree, the leaves are all cur curled up and the whole thing is covered with what looks like spider webs, but it's the webbing from the caterpillar. And hung there patiently. One of the chrysalis's best defense is to be camouflaged. So it's kind of hard to tell which is the chrysalis but because she's labeled the picture of a tiger swallowtail chrysalis, we know that one is the chrysalis. But look at how similar it looks to the leaves on that tree. This cardinal has no idea that a tasty snack is there right under his beak. Until by and by, the tenth little caterpillar, look who's emerging, became a butterfly. And this is a swallowtail. You might see those in the garden. They're pretty exciting when you do see them. 
So one of the cool things is in this book is it shows us all different because they're all different caterpillars. And so it shows us the caterpillar and then what it turns into. And another neat thing is that not all of these caterpillars turn into butterflies. Some of them turn into moths. And the difference between a moth and a butterfly, there's a few. Butterflies are diurnal, which means they're awake during the day. Moths are nocturnal. That means they sleep at night. A moth's antenna is also a lot different. They have big, wide, feathery antenna, and a butterflies are smooth and very cylindrical. A moth is usually in more muted colors, so blacks and grays and browns, and a butterfly can be very, very vibrant. So we've got morning cloak, a buckeye, a cabbage looper, a yellow bear, a yellow necked caterpillar. That turns into a moth. We have a monarch, which is probably the most recognizable butterfly that lots of kids know, that one there, so you might recognize that. These are the painted lady. This is what my class have in our aquariums, and some of them have taken them home. And so there's their caterpillar, and they like thistle leaves, and they also like mallow plants, kind of like a marshmallow, but I don't think they taste as nice as those. And they look similar, but you can notice that they're quite a bit smaller, and they don't have that veining like the monarch does. This is a woolly bear that turns into a moth and a common wood nymph caterpillar. And finally, this is one that you'll see in your garden, so keep your eyes peeled, a tiger swallowtail. And these ones are really beautiful. So I encourage you to go out very carefully, like a scientist with gentle hands. Turn some of your leaves over and see if you can see some small little eggs. They might be on the underside or the top that have emerged. So there's the eggs with some caterpillars and they're munching on those leaves. Take care. I hope you like listening.